Chapter 15, Requisite Slash Manual. 44, 45, 46, 47. A boy who was doing sit-ups while hanging from the branch of a tree was calling out his reps, sweat dripped off his body and down to the grass and floor of beneath him. 56, 57, 58, 59. Alert! Self-replicating nanorobotic maintenance and repair systems have reached the requisite energy levels. Beginning construction. Ha! Huh. Surprised, Dirk stopped and looked at the notification. So I've finally developed enough, ha? Huh? Took long enough. Well, I guess I wasn't given that enhancement until I was twelve on Earth either. Hop! Flipping himself, Dirk agilely fell from the branch and landed on his feet. Despite only being a ten-year-old, Dirk's body was already starting to take form. When he was a super soldier, he had to get modified and undergo many surgical procedures to enhance him with a superior body, genetics, and cybernetics. However, he now had all that from birth, and his body was able to develop into everything naturally. Now, he didn't have to adapt to everything and just built himself from the ground up. So while he wasn't a big kid, and his muscles were only just beginning to show, he knew that he definitely had a lot of strength. Several years of his grueling training was able to get his body into tip-top shape, and finally, one of his cybernetic abilities was unlocked. Because he was young, his body wasn't outputting a lot of energy. This meant his cybernetics couldn't draw on the necessary energy to power a system like the nano-repair bots. Now though, they were activated and he could already feel their construction inside his abdomen. The food and energy stockpiled in his body was quickly processed and drawn on, and he immediately felt hungry. I should ask for some more food. The more fuel I have, the more those bots can continue their construction. I don't want it to stop and then have to wait a long time for it to stockpile more energy again. Saying that, Dirk finished up his workout and headed back to the manor. When he arrived, a maid was waiting by the door. Have a good workout, Dirk. Yes, Miss Sanala. Good. So how much are we eating today? Hmm, it's a lot, but triple the amount I usually eat. My my. Having a growth spurt again? Something like that. Dirk nodded as he and the maid walked into the manor. Sanala was the head maid, and with Dirk being the only child around the house now, she really only focused on catering to him. Much of what she did involved preparing him lots of food. The amount he ate grew by the month, but since he was the only one frequently there beside his mother, they had more than enough for his growing body. After cleaning himself up in his bathroom and dressing, Dirk arrived at the kitchen where all the food he asked for was sitting, freshly cooked. Nearly two pounds of meat were sitting on a large plate, sliced into thin strips. There was also a plate filled with thick slices of bread that were covered in melted cheese. Sitting and grabbing a piece of bread, he gobbled it up in one go. As soon as the bread entered his stomach, he could feel the accelerated digestion and the draw on the chemical energy given by the bread. Despite not being active, his body heat up a bit as his cells produced energy for the cybernetic construction. Feeling all that, Dirk went on to grab more slices of bread and strips of meat, stuffing his face with nutrient-rich food. His body was warm the entire time as everything was quickly digested. Two hours later, Dirk ate the last strip of meat. Despite eating so much, his body actually seemed leaner than before, a consequence of so much energy being burned. Much of the fat he had on him and nutrients within were taken away. Show me the nanite construction process. Dirk gave a command in his head to the AI interface as he gulped the last of the meat down. Nanorobotic maintenance and repair systems at 31% capacity. Unable to continue construction. Insufficient mineral reserves. Mm, makes sense. Dirk nodded seeing the insufficiency. To construct the nanites required minerals like iron and proteins, and he didn't have an infinite supply. But that was fine. As he ate more every day, more nanites would be constructed and gradually fill up his body alongside his blood. And since some had already been built, they would be able to store energy themselves and he wouldn't have to stockpile so much. They were a very versatile machine. Give it another week and I'll be set. Dirk? Are you home? 
suddenly, a voice came from the entrance of the manor. Dirk recognized the voice and shouted back. I'm here, mother. Oh, good. I'm going to go freshen up, and your father is on his way. Once he gets here, we're leaving for the dukes. Understood. Nodding, Dirk quickly got up from the table and headed to his room to change into more formal clothes. You ready? Dirk's father spoke as he walked down to the hall. It was just Dirk and his parents going today. Yes, sir. All right, then let's head out. The three walked out of the manor and boarded the flying carriage, quickly taking off into the sky. Dirk watched as they rose from the ground and got a large view of the daytime city. Soon, though, they were descending toward another residence. After landing on the runway street, they got off and walked over to the Duke's Manor. Mark was Strider. Butler Gordon. After landing, Riker greeted the butler just like the last time they were here. That was six years ago, though, and Dirk had grown a lot since then. The butler smiled, seeing Dirk and motioned toward the house. The Duke awaits you. Please follow me. The butler led the family into the Duke's manor and off toward a certain room. After traveling down the hallway, they came up to a pair of fancy doors that slightly radiated mana. Knock, knock. Come in. After tapping the doors, a voice was heard from within. The butler pushed open the doors and let the family in before closing it behind them. After walking inside, Dirk was immediately hit with a wave of dense mana. The place seemed almost stuffy with how dense it was. He didn't let it bother him though as he looked around. This room was a library. The first thing they saw through the doors was an open area with a table and chairs. Around that though were rows of tall bookshelves. The whole place felt old, like it was some kind of ancient repository. Even the stone below their feet seemed aged, as well as the roof of marble above them. You're here. Come. Let me see how much you've changed in six years. A loud voice came from the table in the center of the library. It was the Duke, and he was looking at Dirk with unbridled interest. The last time Dirk had seen the Duke was six years ago, but even today he looked no different. He was a man who radiated strength, and Dirk could feel that more than ever. His clothes looked incredibly expensive but also modest. All that combined with his combed back hair and scraggly beard made him seem like a rough but valiant man. The family walked forward, and Dirk approached the Duke while his parents took a seat at the table. Scanning him, the Duke nodded. I see you've been conditioning yourself. You have very good drive for a kid. It's not often you see someone so young who can force themselves to work out. Thank you, Duke Hillshire. Heh, <laughs> still as formal as always. Anyway, today you're here to pick out a technique. Take a seat and I'll explain things. Understood. Nodding, Dirk took a seat across from the Duke. He then went on to speak. When it comes to both mana and anima, there are different ways to train yourself. Throughout the ages and generations, countless techniques to train mana and anima were created. However, only some can withstand the test of time and validity. Like people, not all techniques are created equal, and they are subject to the same law of the jungle as we are. Only the best and most versatile can be passed on. In general, training the mystical energies around us involves accumulation and cultivation. The techniques you see will merely be certain patterns in the way one accumulates and cultivates. Those patterns though can produce different outcomes and effects that can give one an edge in battle especially if the technique is suited toward your element and combat style. Tell me Dirk, what's your turret now? The Duke asked, and Dirk pulled up his profile. Profile. Name, Dirk Strider. Species, Human. Tier, I. Rank, I. Attributes, Fire, 71%, Lightning, 89%, Earth, 88%, Metal, 93%, Dark, 92%. Traits, Cybernetic Enhancement, Adaptable Genes, Pure Soul. Skills, AI Interface. I'm a tier I and rank I dash dot. Dirk responded and closed his profile. Neither rank nor tier had advanced much. The last time he moved up was after he learned the fire and earth chore magics. 
nothing has happened since then. Even after he barely learned the water ball spell two and a half years after being taught the runes, he still didn't advance again. The duke simply nodded though as if he expected it. I see. Looks like you've taken the first half step. Have you done anything special? No. I only test my control over the mana in the atmosphere throughout the days, alongside working out every day. Whenever I recover though, I do feel some of the anima seep into my body. Hmm. That's natural. Anima helps the body recover, and through recovery anima is permanently added to the body. However, that will only take you so far, and intentional cultivation is necessary to progress to great heights. Anyway, it looks like you are decently talented to be able to attain Tirai at a young age. Honestly, just based on what I'm told about your work ethic I would have high hopes for you. Dirk tilted his head at that last part, and he faced his parents. His mother smiled at him. The duke requested that I keep tabs on you and your progress, and I've told him about your almost obsessive physical training. Also, I'm going to ask now that you take it easier on yourself when toughening your body. It's not a bad thing to toughen bones and skin, but it shouldn't be to the point where you have purple bruises on your body every day. I understand. Hearing her, Dirk's brow furrowed. His mom knew about that? He had never let her see any of his bruises. All he was doing was kicking trees, so it wasn't like he couldn't handle himself. Toughening your body like that was necessary for some martial arts. He knew when to stop, so having bruises all the time wasn't a big deal. Still, he didn't know when she could have discovered his injuries. Could it be? Wait, blood sometimes gets on my clothes. Could she have seen that? But the maids are the ones who wash clothes. Did they tell her? Looks like I have to be more careful around Miss Sanala. She reports to Mom. Dirk made several notes in his head and Cecilia chuckled at her son's conflicted face. The Duke continued. Anyway, you've proven yourself driven, and any more information about training methods will come from the manuals themselves. There are manuals for both mana and anima. Normally, I would only give you the mana cultivation technique, but since you've come this far, I'm thinking I'll open to you an anima manual. If it's okay with your parents, of course. The Duke looked to Riker, who was surprised. You want him to start now? It's not about what I want. He's your kid, Strider. I'm only here to give advice. While he shouldn't necessarily be brought to any school this instant, I'm thinking he can at least start comprehending the manual. He's disciplined and oddly mature, at least from what I've seen and heard. So with a little guidance, he should be able to start building his foundation. Hmm. I suppose you're right. Riker looked toward his wife, who was the expert on anima and training it. She in turn looked at Dirk. She had seen his determination and knew that discipline wasn't a problem for her child. While he was a bit unnatural in that sense, he was who he was, and Cecilia knew that he wouldn't have any problem with consistent training or dealing with pain. If even he wasn't qualified to take up a manual and simply begin learning a technique, then nobody was. Cecilia nodded to her husband. Very well. Let's do that then. All right. We'll start with the anima manual then. Smiling, the duke waved his hand. Moments later, several books flew over and landed themselves on the table. There were six. When training anima, the main effects are increased strength, stamina, speed, and durability. Some manuals focus on a single effect, while some focus on two, and some focus on all of them. Technically, you don't actually need a manual to train anima, but like I said, some have good effects down the line. Now, I know you're young, but I'll ask anyway. What effect would you wish to focus on more, if any? I would wish to cultivate all of them. There aren't any that you should go without. Dirk said after pondering a second. There was no reason you should go without any aspect should you have the ability to train all of them. If you deliberately didn't train one, you would be an idiot. I see. Then let's eliminate these. Saying that, the Duke sent away all six manuals. Then, for more flew over. These four focus on cultivating all of the benefits that Anima gives. However, you should be forewarned. 
Training anima in general is not an easy process. It's painful and uncomfortable as you're changing your body on a fundamental level. However, using some of these manuals can make that process worse. It's not rare to see training methods that involve forcefully breaking down your body. So, if you're going to shy away from pain, then let me know. No, I won't. Really? Are you confident? I'm not sure a kid like you would have what it takes to cultivate some of these. I only do my best. I don't care how painful the method is. I want the best one. Dirk spoke to the Duke with conviction. He wasn't afraid of pain, so there was no way he would let it get in the way of him gaining strength. Doing something like that was against his very nature. Hoo hoo, all right then. You want the best? You think you've got what it takes? Here. Screw these manuals. Let's bring out the best. Chuckling evilly, the Duke threw the four manuals away and snapped his finger. The next moment, another manual flew out. This manual was a bit bigger than the others, and when it landed on the table, it sounded like a thick slab of stone. Thud. Don't tell me that's what I think it is. Riker spoke as he saw the book. Hearing him, the Duke chuckled. Indeed it is, Strider. This manual is called the Animal Resonance Destruction Technique. Compared to some other manual names, it's a bit straightforward and underwhelming, but I assure you that this is one of the best techniques you can acquire besides the one that the Emperor created himself. Here, tough guy. Take a look. Smiling, the Duke pushed the book to Dirk. Sitting up, Dirk looked at the metal cover which had the title engraved on it in giant caps letters. He opened it despite his mother's frowning face. The Duke spoke as Dirk flipped through the pages. This manual focuses on gaining anima through recovery. You know how you were able to gain anima by recovering from workouts? Well this book takes that a thousand steps further. This manual is one of the most ancient training methods, and also the most infamous among the few people that actually know of its existence. It's made its reputation as the ancestor of all anima training methods as it is essentially the foundation of nearly every other training manual. It's also notorious for being the most terrifying. Its brutality is unmatched, and there are plenty of people who have killed themselves training this technique. But its effects are among the best. There isn't anything else like this one. Here, look at this. The Duke used magic and flipped some pages, stopping on a specific one. Dirk took a look at the words and spoke them aloud. Second section, Skin Destruction Technique. The skin is the membrane that surrounds your body and the first line of defense. It is also the gateway by which all anima enters your body. Using the skill displayed in the first section, one will enhance and modify the skin and its properties so as to accommodate for all further destruction techniques. To enhance the skin, one must use anima resonance specific to the skin in order to destroy sections of the skin starting from the hands and feet. The resonance must continue until red cracks appear on the section of enhancement, and only then can the resonance be halted. Once halted, allow the skin to fully recover before breaking it down once more. Continue this process until the skin no longer breaks down under resonance. Only then will it have been fully enhanced. Dirk trailed off as he looked at the diagram that was in the manual. It showed a picture of a hand, and it had all these cracks spread over it. Just the picture looked incredibly painful, and Dirk was suddenly starting to understand why this book was so infamous. This is almost sadistic. It's literally torturing yourself. But. I'm actually starting to like it. Dirk's mind started to churn. For normal people, recovery alone would take days or weeks, and who knew how long it would take to complete the whole process of enhancement. During that time, they would be vulnerable, so nobody who had a life and things to do could use this method. But Dirk had his nanobots that were just starting to be built. When they were finished, he would have excellent recovery times, more than enough to expedite the recovery process. Knowing that, he was quickly drawn to this technique. If it's as good as the Duke said it was, then he was definitely going to choose it. And while it would be extremely painful, so what? That wasn't even a factor for Dirk. Chapter 16, Man Heart After reading the section, the Duke smiled at Dirk. 
it didn't take a genius to realize how insane this technique was. However, contrary to the Duke's expectations, Dirk finished reading the page and nodded. This looks good. It says that once you finish enhancing all of your skin, you'll be placed in the third overall anima rank. You'll also have extremely resilient skin that's more accepting toward anima, letting you have an easier time absorbing it. Duke Hillshire, are all the sections like the skin one? Dirk asked the Duke who seemed knowledgeable about the book's contents. With a weird gaze, the Duke answered him. Each section goes through the main systems of your body like the muscles, veins, organs, bones, and even the brain. After each one, the body as a whole is strengthened a level, and you'll gain a perk related to the section. So yes, they're all similar. Hmm. I think I like it. You like it? This manual is basically torture, and you like it? The Duke asked with an incredulous gaze. He was beginning to think that Dirk had read something entirely different. Dirk just shrugged. It looks painful, but pain shouldn't stop you from doing anything. Why wouldn't you want to push through it and gain the strength given by one of the best training techniques? It's not as simple as pushing through pain, kid. That's half the battle. The other half is recovery, and as you climb the levels, it gets progressively worse. Tell me, while all the skin on your hands is destroyed, bleeding, and weak, how are you going to properly cast magic? How are you going to eat food? And what about your feet? When the skin on your soles is destroyed, how are you going to walk or run? You'll be sitting on your ass for weeks, and that's only for one cycle of destruction. Each section of skin takes several destruction cycles, and you have to go through all of the skin on your body. Although each cycle shortens as you gain anima, promoting faster recovery, you still have to get through that initial period of healing. Now, although you might be able to rely on your parents for healing potions to speed up the process, that can get expensive and it's up to them if they'll pay for it all. The Duke ended, causing Dirk to pause and thought. If I need to, I can go and work for any money I might need. But I don't think I would need any potions. I just graduated school, so if I can enhance the soles of my feet and my hands before I enter the academy, then I wouldn't need to worry about being unable to function. That is true but… Sigh, kid, I wasn't serious about you training this technique. Look, there are other techniques that would suit you well, so why don't we look at those? Sorry Duke Hillshire, but I feel I should train this technique. Dirk spoke outright to the Duke, his voice serious. As he thought about it more, he was increasingly drawn to the technique. It was almost perfect for him, and when he read the perks it gave for the skin enhancement, he knew that this was the one. Seeing his conviction, the Duke felt conflicted. He almost felt sorry for Dirk's parents as he seemed to have sent Dirk down the path of self-torture unintentionally. However, he suddenly thought of something. A compromise. You know what? We don't have to decide this now. Here, I'll send you home with two other training manuals as well as this one. Read them all, and in one week, let me know about your decision. Saying that, the Duke waved two other books over and set them on the table. Riker quickly agreed with the Duke's suggestion. Indeed. Let's do that. You'll have time to go over the books more and ponder. Understood. Dirk could only nod in assent. The Duke chimed in once more. And by the way, if one technique doesn't fit you, you'll be able to change it. The training methods of anima are pretty universal, so you won't harm yourself unless you suddenly switch to a different one while at a high level. That's not something you have to worry about any time soon though, so while you're young, you'll be able to try a couple and find the best fit. Understood. Good. Now we can move on to your mana training manual. Unlike anima though, once you choose one and start training it, you won't be able to change it. Especially if it's one of the advanced ones like what I'm going to show you. The methods vary wildly, and switching techniques can be extremely dangerous. So, you must choose wisely. Of course, your parents and I are here for guidance, so don't hesitate to ask questions. I understand. Then let's start. You're the fire, earth, and dark element. You also have two specialties. I'm thinking you'll be better off with a universal technique instead of a specialized one. 
What do you think, Strider? The Duke turned to Riker, who nodded. I agree. I don't wish to force him down any one path with a narrow technique. Very well. Here, take a look at these. The Duke waved over some more books and set them on the table. There were three, and Dirk took a look at each one. There aren't many universal techniques that can properly accommodate multiple elements. Usually people will only have two or three attributes that aren't specialized and are only basic elements. But you not only have two specialties, but the dark element as well. Luckily, universal techniques that can accommodate everything aren't incredibly rare, although they can differ in difficulty tremendously. Take this one for example. The ambient immersion technique, specialized in merging your body with the environmental mana and becoming one with the world around you. It's definitely one of the more difficult ones. The Duke pointed to one of the books, and Dirk went to go open it. He quickly flipped through the pages, every single one being scanned by his AI automatically. The books that the Duke placed in front of him weren't exactly short. They all consisted of diagrams and long descriptions, ensuring that the reader was able to properly understand what they would feel and how to move forward. Plus, they had to describe the technique at every tier. Excuse me, do Kilshire, but what's the highest tier one can attain? Dirk asked this as he closed the book. The book described its technique until tier 6, and Dirk wasn't sure if that was good or bad. The Duke answered. The highest tier one can attain, so far, is tier 8. The Emperor and almost every Duke in this empire is tier 8. Your father happens to be a tier 7. So you, Duke Hillshire, are tier 8? Yes, I am a tier 8. I see. So why does this technique only go to tier 6? That's because the creator only advanced to tier 6 with this technique. The Duke spoke with a smile. Nearly every technique that you find will only go until tier 6. From there, one usually must continue advancing the technique on their own, thereby creating their own unique technique. This can be considered one of the requisites to advance past tier 6. After all, every tier 7 is a unique existence, so they must have their own unique technique. You'll figure this out as you climb the tiers. For now, don't worry about it. Understood. So, what did you think about that technique? The Duke pointed to a second book Dirk had flipped through while they talked. Dirk nodded. The circle core technique is interesting. You form a magic circle within your body for each attribute, and then utilize them as cores, slowly developing them across each tier. Indeed. This one is one of the medium difficulty ones. In general, mana techniques will evolve across each tier. The techniques that have stood the test of time have found the best development route, making advancement through the tiers streamlined and surefire. With them, you won't have to worry about a step in the process not giving the correct results. Of course, this more or less only applies to the good ones. There are many other low-class techniques that will only reliably bring you to tier 3 or 4 or 5. Luckily, you won't have to worry about that. The only thing you have to worry about is picking a technique that's right for you and then sticking with it. How far you go after that depends on your talent. The only unfortunate thing that most people have to deal with is the fact that everyone has to pick their techniques at a young age. It's difficult to choose one when you don't understand your combat style, personality, or skills. The Duke spoke with a sigh, and Dirk nodded in understanding. Selecting a technique based on one's combat style would indeed be incredibly advantageous. But if you didn't know where your talents lied or how you wished to carry yourself through conflict, you could only pick a technique blindly. However, there was one unobvious benefit to picking at a young age. You could develop yourself around the technique, maximizing your strengths. Luckily though, Dirk didn't need to worry about these things. He was young and knew his fighting style. Though, picking a mana cultivation technique would still be difficult. After all, he's never fought with magic. He could only make an educated guess on what he should pick based on everything he knew about himself. You don't have to decide right away though. Like your anima manual, you can take a couple home and deliver it for a while. Now, look at these for a bit while I, go and grab something. 
the Duke scratched his chin for a bit and smiled at Dirk before suddenly getting up and walking somewhere. Riker looked at him oddly. Grab something? What is he doing? Oh well. So Dirk, what do you think? Riker stood up and moved behind his son. The manuals look good, but I don't know how effective they are compared to each other. I am also unfamiliar with what goal they attempt to achieve. These manuals all train your mana. More specifically, they train your attributes. Here, listen close and let's hope you can understand this. Riker pulled up a chair next to his son and went into lecturing mode. You have three attributes. Dark, fire, and earth. To advance in tiers, you must train what's called a mana pool. Putting it simply, each attribute of yours will have a mana pool. The more you improve your mana pools, the higher your tier becomes. These techniques follow that logic to some extent. Like this one. You create magic circles in your body that act as cores. Since you have three attributes, you will have three cores. Then you train each one. Do you understand? Yes. Dirk answered as he processed everything. These concepts were foreign to him, but he didn't have a hard time understanding what his father was saying. Good. Now, these techniques are on mostly the same level. The Duke won't pull out any low-quality techniques. They will all get you to tier 6 rather reliably, should you have the talent of course. All you need to do now is look through the pros and cons of each one. What does each one give you compared to the other? For this magic circle one, it gives you an increased ability to handle complex magic spells. However, direct casting is much more difficult. These are the kinds of things you want to look at. If you wish to be able to easily direct cast spells, then this might not be the one for you. I see. Dirk had a bit of a light bulb moment as he understood. He then started going through each technique, carefully tracking the pros and cons of each one as well as all the details such as how long it took to train each level and the difficulty. A chart was rapidly formed with his AI, comparing the options against each other. However, before he could decide on anything, the Duke came back. All right. Here it is. Thud. A book was dropped on the table, stirring Dirk from his thoughts. The Duke smiled mysteriously. This here is a technique. I got it a while ago as a gift from the Emperor after your father and I clear out a battlefield. It's been in my safekeeping for nearly twenty years, and this is one of the few times I've ever taken it out. Have a look. The Duke slid the book to Dirk. The book was thick and also sported a silver metallic cover. Dirk looked at the words engraved on it. Man heart. Two simple words, but they implied so much. Dirk was immediately interested and he flipped over the cover, feeling the fancy pages within. Surprisingly, each page was totally black and seemed to be made of luxurious parchment. The letters were written with some kind of mysterious ink that glowed white, and he could even detect some mana on the pages centered around the letters. It all added to the majesty of the book. No others could compare. Dirk read. The mana heart technique is one that forms mana according to the natural systems of the body. The human heart pumps blood through the body, delivering energy and sustaining its life. Likewise, the mana heart will form a centralized heart of mana, and elemental energies will be delivered throughout the body and soul for usage. The cultivator of this technique will form one mini heart for each attribute, and will later fuse the hearts to form a single mana heart. This heart will be capable of shifting between all attributes of the user seamlessly. Only those with multiple attributes can effectively utilize this technique. Dirk started reading the book, and he couldn't seem to stop as he flipped through it continuously. Meanwhile, Riker's eyes were bulging out of his sockets. This is what you received from the Emperor after that battle? This. I don't know if this gift is priceless or worthless. Riker was conflicted about the gift. It seemed amazing, but Hillshire couldn't cultivate a different technique from the one he had began with, not to mention that he was a tier 8 who created his own unique technique. This technique was of no use to him. The Duke just smiled though. It's true that this had no use to me. However, it's still one of the best techniques ever created. I took it because I wanted to pass it on to my children. 
However, almost none of them are suitable for this technique. Really? That doesn't seem likely. It's true. To take full advantage of this technique, one must have multiple attributes, preferably three or more. Then you can form a stronger man heart. The book assumes that only those with multiple attributes will even pick it up. However, my children only have one or two, while those with three don't have high affinities for all attributes. After all, even two attributes is rare, forget about three or four. There are other techniques that were much more suitable for them, and using this would have been unnecessarily difficult, possibly even holding them back from their full potential. I see. But why are you offering this to Dirk? Three reasons. The Duke put up three fingers. He's suitable for the technique, he has the discipline and smarts to follow through, and he's your son. I'm going to offer him what I would my own children because that's what I owe you as a brother. Besides, it would be quite unfortunate if this technique never got used. I'm still trying my best, but I don't know how many more children I'll be able to have. This thing can't sit on a dusty shelf forever. The Duke chuckled merrily, and Riker smiled with him. Without words, the two stood up and gave each other a brotherly hug, smacking each other on the back. So? How is it, kid? The Duke asked as he separated from the hug, moving over to see Dirk reading the tenth page. Hearing him, Dirk snapped out of his reverie. He wanted to keep his eyes glued to the page, but he wouldn't disrespect the Duke like that. I like this technique, Duke Hillshire. Like? You seemed a bit more smitten than that. That's natural though. This technique is one of the best. My experience is lacking, but I agree that it is one of the best. Ha ha. You're funny kid. Well, since you like it, it's yours. However, I want you to take these two and read through them as well. Give me an answer by the end of the week, and think carefully until then. Understood. Thank you, do kill share. No problem, kid. Dirk thanked the Duke after he dropped two other books on top of the man heart technique. Dirk agreed that he needed to read the others, but he didn't know if there was even a competition. The anima resonance destruction technique was most preferable and also one of the best anima manuals he could get. Then there was the man heart technique. Both were extraordinary, and he wanted them both. The decision was so much easier to make than he thought it would be, but that was all right. He wasn't really one to overthink things. When all that was done, Dirk picked up the books, and the family headed out. While the books weren't incredibly thick, they were still decently heavy. Plus, the two books that Dirk wanted had metal covers. This increased their weight quite a bit, and he ended up using a good deal of strength just to carry them. When they got home, Dirk immediately took the books to his room and dropped them on his desk. He was only at the Duke's house for an hour or so, so he quickly got to reading. Chapter 17, Techniques Since Dirk had the rest of the day to do as he wanted, he didn't hesitate as he buried himself in the books. First, he decided to go through the extra books that the Duke insisted he read, just to get them out of the way. And after reading both the mana techniques and anima manuals, he nodded as if his expectations were met. They seem like watered-down versions of the best too. The Duke wasn't lying when he said that the anima resonance technique is the ancestor of all other anima techniques. They're all loosely based on the resonance technique, made to be less painful but also with lesser benefits. As for mana techniques, those all follow a system of course to some extent. And the mana heart seems to be the best implementation of that logic. He thought as he closed the last book. He then looked toward the two metal books with high expectations. While he wouldn't use the other techniques, he had documented every page just in case. His hands dove toward the anima resonance destruction technique, and the heavy cover was instantly flipped open. He read through the first section. The anima resonance destruction technique is a method by which the trainer integrates anima with his body. The technique involves taking direct control of anima and imparting specific frequencies to it. When the frequency matches the part of the body that one wishes to enhance, that part of the body is destroyed. In the process of both destruction and recovery, anima is fused with the body. 
This technique is based on the logic that anima is inherently rejected by and harmful to any living being's body, but only until a certain threshold, after which it becomes beneficial. This benefit is the foundation of all body refinement. Dirk read through the first section, and he felt enlightened. The book did exactly as it described. Dirk would have to take control of anima and then give it a certain frequency. In the case of the second section, which involved destroying the skin, he would have to match the anima to the frequency of the skin. The anima would then destroy the skin on every level. Through this, two things would happen. During the process of destruction, the skin that wasn't destroyed would absorb anima and become more resilient. Basically, it was like survival of the fittest for his skin cells. After that, while the rest of his skin healed, it would absorb lighter amounts of anima. After all, the body absorbed anima while recovering. These two processes worked to infuse anima into the body. There were different frequencies in the book, and each frequency was targeted toward a part of the body. There was a specific order that the book insisted he followed though. They were as follows. 1. The skin. 2. The blood. 3. The muscles. 4. The bones. 5. The organs. 6. The brain. Each section would increase your overall rank by a whole level. Finishing the skin section would raise you to the beginning of the third rank. And at the end, when you finish the brain section, you would be put at the beginning of rank 8. Dirk was stunned seeing this. None of the other techniques would bring you so high. This one seemed to be a straight path to the top. However, that path was a tortuous one. Anyone who believed they would simply become the most powerful human by following this manual was a fool. This technique involved literally destroying yourself. The skin section was tolerable. It was merely the skin after all. Even the muscles were rather easy. But the vascular system? The bones? The organs? What were you supposed to do when enhancing the heart? If you messed up, you would easily kill yourself. The best case scenario was crippling yourself. Everything beyond the muscle section was extremely dangerous. Training this technique was not at all smooth. But Dirk was drawn further and further into it as he read. He realized that he could solve the biggest problems put forth by this technique with his own cybernetic enhancements. The only thing he had to push through was the pain. It was like this technique was made for him. Eventually, Dirk had totally documented the book with his AI. To start training this, he would have to learn how to impart frequencies onto anima, a skill the book called anima resonance. After that, he just needed to begin his cycles of destruction. He didn't decide to practice this technique quite yet though, instead jumping into the Mana Heart book. He was just as excited about this as he was about the anima manual. Having already read some of it, Dirk was able to quickly gain an understanding of the process. There were two main components to this technique, the mana heart and the mana lungs. These two components could actually be considered one and the same. The mana lungs were merely a technique that enabled the user to effectively intake mana from the surroundings, allowing them to accumulate. In other mana techniques, meditation was the way to intake and accumulate mana. Dirk read through the mana lungs technique. It said that its focus was in taking mana along with your breaths. Of course, this wasn't normal breathing, but breathing with the soul. However, focusing on intaking mana with your normal breathing would help with developing the technique in the first stages. Practicing this technique was actually the first step in the process. Only after you could breathe mana could you move on to accumulate your first mini heart. To develop the mini heart, one had to accumulate one of their elemental attributes in their chest. When you follow the technique, it would create something like a core of mana. You would do this for all attributes. For Dirk, he would need three. Developing these smaller hearts was the first step in raising your tier to high levels. Upon first becoming skillful with the mana lungs technique, one would saturate their body with mana until they reached tier two. Only then would they move on to form their hearts. Creating a single mini heart with one attribute would raise them to tier 3. However, one would then have to create at least two more which would put them at the mid-tier 3 range. 
the book didn't even make it possible for someone with less than three attributes to train this. After creating the three hearts, one would have to strengthen them, a process that pushed them to the beginning of Tier 4. Beyond that though was territory Dirk couldn't understand. He only knew that fusing the three hearts would come after you formed all three, but how he would do that, he had no clue. He still needed to become familiar with the first steps. Nevertheless, Dirk had already made his decision. He was going to use the mana heart technique no matter what. As for the anima resonance destruction technique, he would do his best to ensure his parents let him train it. If they didn't, he would cross that bridge when he came to it. For now, he just started to familiarize himself with the first steps of each technique. Since his nano repair bots hadn't yet been fully developed, he decided he wouldn't train the anima technique and just focus on the mana heart. He looked at the first section which described the process of using the mana lungs. Pull in the surrounding elemental energy with each inhale, and push out with each exhale. During the inhale, you should saturate your body with amounts of energy slightly exceeding your limit. This will cause a sharp pain in your mind. Upon feeling this pain, push out all the energy within your body, effectively depriving yourself of energy. This will cause feelings of fatigue, dizziness, and lower mental energy levels. Hold this state until the point of passing out where you will then inhale all the energy once more. Repeat this process until all mental energy is exhausted. Note 1, for optimal results, the element for which the individual has the highest affinity should be utilized most. This will not affect future usage of other elements or lopsided affinity. Note 2, when the term body is used, it implies the soul. Mana is not inherently material. Dirk read the directions disregarding that last part. He had no idea what the soul was or how it worked, but he understood what he was supposed to do. He lifted his head and stared off into space, sensing all the different elemental energies around him. Technically, his highest affinity was for the metal specialization under the earth attribute. But he decided to use the dark element since he had the most practice with it. When looking at the elements around him, Dirk could see everything perfectly. When it came to the fire, earth, or dark element, he had no trouble at all detecting each one. They appeared so clearly to him, and controlling them was as easy as grasping it with his hand. This confused him though. Wasn't his dark affinity supposed to be much higher than earth or fire? Why could he see and control the other two just as clearly? This was a question he wanted to answer, but he didn't worry about it much as he pulled in the dark element around him. It looked as if shadows were flooding to him as tons of the dark element was pulled into his body. This was Dirk's attempt at inhaling. Soon, Dirk was feeling full. He could sense a limit to the amount of energy he could withhold. Any more than this would be pushing his limits. He disregarded that though as he used his energy to pull in even more. Ack! Suddenly, a sharp pain shot through his head. Dirk was caught off guard as the pain was much stronger than he thought it would be. It felt like a knife was digging through his brain, except the pain went beyond his head. He could seem to feel the soul with that pain, and he felt vulnerable. It was like he had to do everything possible to prevent damage to his soul. It was an instinct that went beyond instincts. Because of that, Dirk lost control of the elements within him. The dark energy spilled out of him unconsciously, and he felt weakened. He slumped back in his chair with a nasty headache. Damn. That hurts. He groaned a bit, though he was still shocked. It had been a long time since he had felt pain that couldn't be suppressed. He could always maintain control of himself through all forms of torment. But this was a different kind of pain. It seemed like he would have to train up his tolerance. His energy was also drained. However, that didn't stop Dirk from continuing. He had done the inhale, so he decided to do the exhale. He forced his throbbing mind to take control of the energy within him and push it out. Fire, earth, and dark energy flowed out of him, and he quickly felt devoid of energy. He didn't stop though until he was close to passing out, just like the book said. However, when he was dangerously close to giving out, his mind stopped utilizing energy, thus not expelling any more mana. This led to the mana in the surroundings to flood into his body. 
the feeling hit him like a truck, a mix of revitalization and overwhelming intake similar to drinking too much water. Dirk's mind became lucid again, but he struggled to maintain mental clarity. After much of his willpower was expended, he forced himself to inhale once again. Unfortunately, he couldn't bring in that much mana before he seemed to lose all his energy. His mind effectively collapsed from exhaustion, and he wanted to immediately fall asleep. Surprisingly though, he didn't give in. He suddenly pulled himself out of his chair and dropped to the floor, beginning to do push-ups. It was the oddest thing to do, but Dirk had a certain thought in mind. He needed to boost his tolerance to mental exhaustion and maintain effective combat strength during such times. If he were to fight using magic in the future, then he would no doubt become exhausted just like this. Because of that, he needed to be able to physically operate while mentally tired. His physical body wasn't impacted by mental exhaustion, so he only needed to get used to moving while his mental faculties were impaired. Dirk went on and did a few dozen push-ups before putting his hands on the floor to do a handstand. He kicked up into the air, but he got incredibly disoriented and fell to the floor. He proceeded to continue and try to get into a handstand, something that usually wasn't difficult, but he kept falling over and over. Finally, after a few minutes of trying, he was able to maintain his handstand for a while. He then went and walked around his room on his hands for a couple laps. Twenty minutes later, after Dirk had done some other exercises, his mental clarity returned. He still felt his head throb, but it wasn't as bad as at first. He sighed as he staggered over to his bed, collapsing on top of it before immediately falling into a deep slumber. Beep, beep, beep. Dirk's eyes flew open as an alarm rang in his mind. He had told his AI to wake him in three hours just before he went to sleep. As he crawled off his bed, Dirk was surprised to feel oddly refreshed. His head no longer had that throb, and his mind was in tip-top shape. He didn't go back to practicing the Manalong's technique though. He still needed to do his second workout of the day. After changing, Dirk left his house and jogged off to the forest he usually worked out at. In his shorts, one could see the bruises from yesterday's martial arts training. However, they weren't purple anymore, instead almost healed. These were the nano repair bots at work. Since they were only at 30% capacity, they didn't work as fast, but they were still able to heal most injuries rather quickly. Once they were at full capacity, bruises could be taken care of by the hour. This effect would only grow more effective as time passed and he grew. After arriving at the forest, Dirk proceeded to do his run. He ran 20 kilometers, exhausting himself before moving on to do more intensive workouts. He did pull-ups, sit-ups, handstand push-ups, burpees, and many more dynamic exercises. By the time he was done, three more hours had passed, and the sun was almost done setting. Dirk didn't stop though and went on to practice martial arts. He walked up to one of the trees he usually used. The bark on either side of it had been torn off, replaced by split dents. This was the tree Dirk used for his kickboxing. While this was one of the softer trees around, it was still amazing that Dirk could damage the tree to such an extent. Something like this was afforded to him who could take the pain and had hard bones. Dirk went on to continue kicking it, not stopping until his shins were basically split open. He then went and chopped at it with his forearms, bruising the bones in them. Only when his arms were purple and a bit swollen did he stop. With pain steps, Dirk jogged back to the house. Instead of entering in the usual way though, he went around the side and found his bedroom window. He then climbed up the parts of the house that protruded, entering through the unlocked window. Dirk then changed clothes before heading down for dinner which he could smell from his room. That night, Dirk went and exhausted himself with the manalungs technique once more before falling fast asleep. The next morning, he was feeling rejuvenated. He went and worked out bright and early, enjoying the cool breeze and morning dew beneath his feet as he jogged to the forest. During the night, the nano repair bots in his body reached 68% capacity, making the healing process for his bruises pass even faster. Looking at them when he woke up, he could barely see any damage on his legs or arms. After doing his run and exercises, Dirk went back to the house with a sweaty body. This time, 
he decided not to do any martial arts. The reason was that today was the day that Ava came for the first time. In fact, when Dirk returned to the house, Ava had already been dropped off by her parents. He walked in on her and his mother in the backyard. Cecilia was showing her different workouts, and Ava was following closely. Upon seeing Dirk though, Cecilia lit up. She waved Dirk over. Dirk! Come over here and show Ava these workouts. Disregarding how tired her son might be, Cecilia had him demonstrate several exercises. He didn't question anything as he dropped to the floor and did what she asked. Ava though was flushed the whole time, both from how tired she was and from seeing Dirk's chiseled and sweaty muscles. Chapter 18, Nano Repair Bots After Dirk had gone through all the exercises his mother asked him to demonstrate, he stood up with shaky arms and legs. His own workout had already drained him, and he could barely do a few push-ups without struggle. He downed a few gulps of water from his water bag and took a look at Ava. While she had only done a few exercises, she was already sweating and gasping a bit for breath. This showed Dirk just how out of shape she was, if she had ever even been in shape before. He honestly underestimated how weak she would be. After Dirk finished up, Cecilia had Ava do more exercises. She reluctantly did as she said, dropping to the floor and barely knocking out two sets of sit-ups. After she finished though, Dirk could see her face contort. He recognized that look easily. She was about to vomit. Sure enough, she got up and ran to a bush before puking up any food in her stomach. Seeing that, Cecilia motioned to Dirk. Hey! Go help her! Help? He tilted his head. How is he supposed to help her? Should he pat her back? Cecilia rolled her eyes. Go hold her hair. Don't let any of the puke get on it. Oh. All right. Dirk just nodded before walking over. Ava was still heaving, but he didn't mind as he stroked back her hair and held it in a ponytail behind her head. Ugh. Sorry. Ava barely spit out her words. She felt incredibly shameful and embarrassed, even more so since Dirk was holding her hair. She just wanted to crawl into a hole and die. She felt like she wasn't far from death anyway with how dreadful vomiting felt. Dirk just shrugged. It's fine. Your body is shocked by the sudden exertion. A week of hard workouts will get you used to it, and you won't throw up anymore. I threw up too when I first started. He spoke from experience. Both in his life on earth and his life here he had thrown up when first starting to exercise. Back when he was first thrown into the super soldier program, all the kids in his group were heaving their guts out from the exertion. He was one of them. It took about a week to get the body used to the shock, and about a month for it to get used to the stress of working out. It was the same when Dirk had first come into this world. He figured Ava would go through the same thing. It was just an adaptation period. After a month or two, one could work out freely and push their performance to its best getting the most out of every session. Ava was silent for a long while as the horrible feeling in her stomach slowly went away over the period of 15 minutes. At first she thought the pain would never end, but as it subsided she felt much better. She staggered to her feet, and Dirk let her hair fall. Thank you. Ava felt like she wanted to cry, but she forced down her emotions and bowed a bit to Dirk. He nodded and turned, looking to his mother who was smiling a bit. All right, head into the house. Workout is over. Food is almost on the table. She waved them over, and the three walked into the dining room. They all sat down as plates were set on the table, full of meat and bread. Dirk had come to figure out that meat was the standard food in this world. The meat that was usually served at his house was similar to beef, only a tad bit more leathery. When it was cooked, they were able to make it nice and tender. Cook it a bit too much though and it became even stiffer. There was a sweet spot one had to hit, otherwise it wouldn't be nice to eat. Plus, there was the mana inside of it which made it not only taste better but also promote recovery. Besides meat though, there was also bread, which was pretty standard. Soup was also another popular meal. To top those off, there were varieties of sauces and spices, 
most of which Dirk had never tried before. It introduced a variety of tastes that he had never enjoyed before. Even on Earth he never got to eat anything extravagant. Dirk quickly gobbled down everything on his plate. Ava had been hesitant for a while, but she eventually just gave in and ate when she felt her empty stomach. Even after filling herself up though, she still ended up only eating a plate of food while Dirk ate five. He was getting hungrier by the day it seemed. This was by design though. Dirk stuffed himself beyond his limits so as to intake as many minerals as possible. And sure enough, as he ate he was able to feel his nanobots become active in his stomach. His body heated up, and the little amount of fat on him was stripped away. Energy was burned and food was processed as more bots were created. The process was still ongoing as he and Ava finished eating. The two got up, and Cecilia walked over. All right. That's your first day. Workouts will become both easier and harder over time. Mostly easier. You'll get used to stressing your body like this. However, you have to maintain a consistent schedule. This only works if you work out at minimum 7 out of 10 days. Any less, and you won't make any noticeable gains. Understood? Yes, madam. Ava nodded. While she had a dreadful time working out today, this was what she signed up for. And given her temperament, she would make sure to come work out simply to avoid scolding or judgment. Good. When we finish workouts and eat, you can head home and clean up. I know Dirk goes back out in the afternoon to exercise, but you're not there yet. Keep at it and you can start joining him. I will. Ava spoke with determination. She was shy and timid, and generally not confident, but when she saw Dirk in his stable aura, she wanted to be like that. She wanted the strength he had. She didn't enjoy being a coward. Cecilia nodded inwardly seeing that. People were forged by struggle, making themselves better. Ava at least didn't complain when she was working out. She simply grunted and fought through the best she could. While she may have been cursing in her head, telling herself that she would never do such a thing again, she was forcing herself forward. What mattered were the actions. The change in her mentality would come along soon after. With that, Ava was escorted home by one of the butlers. Dirk went up to his room to clean up, and once he had come out of his steamy bath, he laid down on his bed, beginning the manalungs technique. Dirk followed the instructions the best he could. He inhaled up until the point he felt that soul-tearing pain, after which the mana inside of him poured out. He then rode that wave, pushing out the remaining slivers of mana to empty himself. The dizziness was close to unbearable, but he was able to force himself through a little better each time he attempted this. And upon almost blacking out, the mana came flooding back in. His mind snapped back to lucidity, and he inhaled once more. This process repeated itself for two more full cycles before he could barely take it anymore. And just when the overwhelming drowsiness was going to overtake him, he dropped to the floor and did a handstand, walking around his room. This was his training cycle. He would do the manalungs technique until he had no more mental energy left. He would then do some physical exercise until the mental fatigue passed, which usually took around 20 minutes. Only after that did he go to his bed and fall fast asleep. Three hours later, he woke up to an alarm. Dirk hopped out of bed with a bit of a headache, but otherwise he was feeling sharp. Three hours was a bit short and wouldn't totally recover his mental faculties, but it was good enough. However, something suddenly happened as his sleepiness went away. Alert! Self-replicating nanorobotic maintenance and repair systems have reached full capacity. System is fully operational. Oh? Dirk's brows raised excitedly when he heard the notification. It had taken a few days, but it really did complete. Given enough materials, the bots didn't take long to replicate. Interface. Let me see my status. Constructing model. Host model. Host age, 10 years. Blood type, AB+. Skeletal structure, organic iron composite. Muscle structure, high power compacted fibers. Sensory organs, high density receptors. 
self-replicating nanorobotic maintenance and repair systems, online. Final stand weapon system, offline. Overdrive systems, offline. Current bodily state, combat capable, 100% healthy, developing. Alert. Final stand weapon system under construction. 0.4% complete. Insufficient mineral reserves. Alert. Overdrive systems charging. 7% charged. Intelligence systems fully functional. Awaiting host orders. Seeing his status, Dirk nodded. With the construction of his repair bots, his other two systems were now allowed to come online, or at least begin preparations. The repair bots did more than just repair. They stored energy and minerals for the other two systems to use. They also acted as his sensors so he could know the status of his body. They were a very versatile machine, and it was one of the reasons Dirk had been so combat effective in his past life. These two other systems would take time to prepare though. For overdrive, it needed to accumulate chemical energy, storing it for when he needed to activate it. This wouldn't take a long time, but it wouldn't be short. As for the final stand weapon system, that would likely take several years. The weapon system needed metals like iron, compounds like gunpowder, and lots of time to take form. While the gunpowder could be slowly synthesized over time, it would take a very long time, especially without Dirk having the needed materials on hand. Back on Earth, super soldiers like him were given capsules filled with compounds like gunpowder and other elements that they would ingest to help build the weapon system. Now though, he wasn't sure if gunpowder even existed. It would have to be synthesized by his bots slowly. With that on top of forming the metal, it could take years for his weapon system to come online. While Dirk wasn't pleased by that fact, he wasn't anxious either. He had around a year and a half before he entered the academy, which meant it could develop a lot before he was faced with any sort of threat to his life. Dirk waved away the screen in his vision before stretching his body a bit. With his bots fully functional, any sort of injury he might have had was now totally healed. His body was in perfect shape. Seeing that, he decided to go and train. Dirk jogged out of the house a few minutes later in nothing but shorts, as usual. When he arrived at the forest, he decided to try some martial arts. He walked up to a fresh tree and flung out his leg. However, he put very heavy force behind it, and when it landed, a loud thud was heard, along with a slight cracking sound. Hmm. Dirk frowned as he felt his shin bone fracture a bit. The skin was also split open. He did this on purpose. He took a look at the wound. It bled for several seconds, leaving a red streak down his leg, but the bleeding stopped soon after. Dirk could see the wound closing by the second, and soon the skin had been sealed. While one could see a cut there, it looked nothing like what it did before where one could see bone underneath. Not only that, but Dirk could feel tingling in the shin bone. His AI sent him information about what was happening, and he could see how the nanites were flooding the bone, setting it back to its original shape. Any tiny fragments that broke off the main bone were put back, and the healing process was kick-started. Until it fully healed, the bone would be sealed and supported by the bots that acted like a cement. After around 30 seconds, Dirk started jumping around. He could run, jump, and move like nothing even happened, although there was a good deal of pain. With the nanites there, moving wouldn't harm his injuries. After a few minutes of movement, a notification appeared from his AI. It said that the injury would be totally healed within four days, and the nanites would support the bone until then. His current state was fully combat capable. Something like this wouldn't inhibit him in the slightest. This was the function of his nano repair bots. It was designed to immediately solve the issues that any injuries brought him, allowing him to maintain combat ability while wounded. No matter how many broken bones or damaged muscles he might have, the Nanites would repair them and restore functionality. Dirk had done plenty of operations with several shattered bones, sliced muscles, or torn tendons, but he was still able to fight because of this very function. However, he was one of the few who could push through the pain that the whole process wrought. Setting bones or repairing muscles was an excruciatingly painful process, 
and continuing to use those very body parts while wounded was even worse. While they were at least supplied with some painkillers on earth, that ran out fast, and Dirk never ended up using it unless the situation was dire. Even now though, he didn't have any painkillers. He would have to feel the full brunt of any injuries he got on this world. Something small like a shinbone fracture was easy to deal with though. Dirk jumped around with ease, and eventually he went on to do his workout like normal. This injury was simply used as a test to make sure his nanites worked as he remembered. The rest of Dirk's week went like normal. Every day, Ava came over and was given a workout to do under Cecilia's watch. All of them were difficult, and Ava even threw up on a few of them, but by the end she had gotten noticeably better. May a while, Dirk continued his own schedule. Wake up, work out, eat, practice the manalongs technique, sleep, work out, practice the technique again, and then sleep at night. This went on until the end of the week. When the final day came around, Dirk had a sit-down with his parents. Both of them wanted to know what he decided on when it came to his techniques. Dirk told them he wanted to practice the mana heart technique, and that he was already making progress with it. Both parents expected this, and they nodded with a smile. They were happy that their son was already able to understand the first steps and begin practicing. However, after that came the decision on the anima technique, something they were conflicted about. Dirk was firm in his desire to practice the anima resonance destruction technique. He would never allow pain to stand in his way, and now that his nano repair bots were fully functional, he was even more confident. Of course, he couldn't convince his parents by pointing this out, so the challenge of convincing them was still difficult. Hearing his desire to train the technique, the two parents were at a loss. They didn't want him to go down such a tortuous path, and they thought that he had no idea what he was subscribing to. They wanted to guide their child, but at the same time, Dirk had shown them that he was capable of taking care of himself to a good extent. The fact that he worked out every day for nearly four years was a huge indicator of his drive and discipline, as well as his pain tolerance. He never complained about anything, and he lived with whatever he was given. He was so different from his siblings that it baffled them. But this is exactly what made them hesitate. He had never expressed his desire for something as strongly as now. Hell, he almost never expressed his desire for anything. They were at a loss of what to do. They didn't know if they should interfere under the guise of guidance or trust their child's ability. They wanted what was best for him, but figuring out what was best for your child was a hard thing to do. They also realized at this moment how little they knew about how to deal with Dirk, and how hands-off they had been with his development. Their other kids were easy, their desires and thoughts open for everyone to see. And since Dirk had always handled himself, they figured he was easy too but now they realized just how limited their understanding of their child was. These thoughts caused Cecilia to get emotional. She felt as if she neglected her child and was a bad mother for not being able to help him. Dirk saw her eyes tear up though and was confused as to why she was sad. Come with me Dirk. As his mother teared up, Riker suddenly stood and motioned Dirk over with a serious face. Dirk didn't question anything and walked with him, entering another room. All right, I'm making the decision now. Riker spoke and he faced his son. His face was conflicted but resolute. Since you want to train that technique, we'll let you. We'll make sure that you aren't hurt and can properly advance. After all, I wouldn't deserve my title as Marquis if I couldn't even help my child with his development. However, you will make a deal with me. Riker narrowed his eyes at his son, who continued to stand there strictly. He felt like he was looking at a soldier. You will promise me that you will switch techniques if you aren't confident in advancing. You will also need to let me know that you understand exactly what you are getting into before moving on to another level. The technique you are training used to be popular, but after tens of thousands of people lost their lives to it, it earned the infamy it has today. This technique is extremely dangerous, and I will force you to practice another technique if you don't understand the things you must do to train it. Am I understood? Yes, sir. Dirk spoke seriously. This was an order from his father. Riker nodded, and his face softened. Luckily, the first section of the technique is only training the skin. 
Should you fail, you aren't at risk of losing your life or disabling yourself, although you would be left with plenty of nasty scars. Through training the skin, you will also understand the pain brought on by this technique. Just know that it gets worse as you train it farther. Now, about your mother. Riker took on a helpless face. Do you know why your mother is sad? No. Dirk shook his head. He really didn't know why his mother would get emotional. He only wanted to train the technique. Look, I'll put it straightforwardly. You need to start showing your mother some love. When you don't, she feels like she's doing something wrong. Has your mother done anything wrong to you? No. Mother is very nice. Then you need to let her know that. And not just by talking. Tell me, what does your mother like? Hmm. Dirk went silent and thought. She liked it when she gave him hugs. He always saw her smile brightly when he willingly sunk into her embrace. She likes hugs. Dirk spoke with that simple conclusion. All right then. If you want to let her know that you love her, you should give her some love like how she does with you. Starting the moment you walk back into that room. Since she's sad now, you should cheer her up. Understood. Then go on. Dirk nodded before walking out of the room. Riker sighed as he followed a bit after. When Dirk walked back, he saw his mother wiping away a few tears, hiding the fact that she was crying. Seeing that, he walked over to her. Since he was still small and she was sitting on a couch, he decided to climb over and lay against her. His mother was surprised before she smiled and hugged him tightly. Dirk had never come to her for any kind of skinship before. She was elated. I love you, sweetie. She spoke softly and she stroked his back. Dirk didn't respond, only closing his eyes and letting himself be coddled. It felt weird being vulnerable, and even after all these years, he was still getting used to it. Chapter 19 Resonance From that day forth, Dirk went on to officially train the mana heart technique and the anima resonance destruction technique. In fact, that very day he went and read up on the first section of the anima technique. In his room, Dirk opened the heavy metal book. The other books had been taken by his father back to the Dukes. Dirk turned the page to arrive at the first section. The Anima Resonance Technique This was the technique whereby the entire manual was based upon. This technique would require him to make the surrounding anima resonate with the different parts of his body, something that would cause the anima to destroy it. This would both make his body stronger and increase the anima levels within him, thereby increasing his rank. The logic was that anima was inherently harmful to and rejected by the body. This was why anima destroyed the body when the two were fused. However, there was a small chance that the anima would fuse with the body and coexist with it, making it stronger. It was this small chance that paved the foundation for all body refinement arts. Without it, Anima would simply be a poison that killed all living beings. After Dirk read through the first section, he decided to give things a go. The first thing he had to do actually wasn't to go straight to destroying the skin. The first part of the Anima Resonance technique was the foundational skill that let one absorb and accumulate Anima. It said that he needed to reach the beginning of rank 2 to be capable of destroying the skin, otherwise the Anima he could wield would be insufficient to do any direct harm. This foundational skill required him to control anima and flood his body with it, holding it in and letting the body absorb some. This would be sufficient to push him to the beginning of rank 2. Of course, it wasn't a painless process. The book said that he would be hit with waves of sickness and weakness after each absorption session. For those with weaker constitutions, they could be bedridden for several days after doing a single session. It was obviously a long and slow process. Dirk was still confident though. His nanites did both repair and maintenance, meaning not only would he not get sick, but any tiny wounds would be quickly healed. It could also store plenty of energy that would keep his body rejuvenated. With this, he could reach rank 2 faster than any normal person. Dirk was eager to quickly start and get to rank 2. The reason was because he wanted to finish destroying his skin before he entered the academy. It would be a reassurance to his parents if he could do that. Since that was the case, he got started right away. 
he followed the directions in the book and grabbed control of the anima around him. Anima appeared to Dirk as a translucent fog, like a combination between steam and heat waves. This slightly invisible liquid flowed around him constantly, just like mana. His mind grabbed a hold of the liquid, and it quickly flowed into his body. Dirk's body was like a vessel being filled as the liquid flooded every corner. With this though came a dull pain. Every single cell in his body felt like it was under pressure. He started to understand how this worked. Dirk filled up his body with all the anima he could comfortably, not pushing himself to the limit like with the mana lungs technique. This by itself didn't do much. However, the next moment, he targeted all the anima in his body and made it fluctuate slowly. This was a very light form of resonance, one that targeted the entire body simultaneously. With this came a burning and tingling pain. All his cells were being slightly harmed. While it wouldn't kill them all, it would definitely hurt as his body fused with some anima. Feeling this, Dirk got worried for a bit. If his entire body was being harmed, would this have lasting effects? Would his brain be injured? There were plenty of systems in his body that could be debilitated because of this. He didn't stop though. He was worried, but there was a section in the book that said nothing would be harmed should one carry out the training properly. This technique only enhanced, and besides the mind-numbing pain and recovery, there weren't any permanent prices to pay for training this technique. The book even talked specifically about the reproductive systems and how they wouldn't be affected, instead being enhanced. Dirk had initially glossed over that seemingly meaningless paragraph, but he couldn't help but think back to it as he felt the pain throughout his body. Testosterone was good for a man's growth. This was an undeniable fact. Dirk didn't want anything untoward happening to that particular system in his body, and thankfully this technique had been tried and tested, so his worries were mostly dashed. Dirk simply sat in his chair and endured the pain. It wasn't unbearable, just uncomfortable. He felt like he was getting bitten by fire ants all over. Honestly, it was only a bit worse than when he intentionally fractured his shin bone. However, he had to endure for a long time. The book told him that he should only stop when he couldn't hold in the anima anymore or if blood seeped out of any orifices. Withholding so much anima was indeed taxing on his mental energy, but he could still last for a good while. His training with mana lungs was actually starting to show its fruits even though he had only trained it for a week. When about half an hour passed, Dirk was finally starting to feel drained. However, he could still keep going. It was only until ten minutes later that he tasted blood in his mouth, causing him to instantly let the anima inside him pour out. Dirk touched his tongue, and a drop of red was left on his finger. The book said to stop when he saw blood, so he had likely reached his limit. Interface Awaiting orders What's my body look like? Scanning Dirk could feel the nanites in his body heat up a bit before calming down. The AI soon came back to him with a report. Light but widespread damage to all internal systems. Damage is microscopic in scale. Nano repair systems are currently repairing. Estimated time to heal, 15 hours. Hmm, not bad. Dirk nodded seeing that. Without the bots, he was sure that the process would take much longer. I can train this resonance technique in the morning, workout, and then continue training mana lungs like normal. The resonance doesn't consume all of my mental energy, so I shouldn't have any conflicts in training. It'll just be another addition to my schedule. He smiled happily. He had been worried that training resonance would drain his mental energy, and he wouldn't be able to recover before he was supposed to train mana lungs. But it looked like there would be no problems since resonance didn't require that much effort. In fact, it would be a good addition to his mental energy training. Like a jog to warm up the body. With that, Dirk waited until the next day to begin his new routine. The second go around with the resonance technique caused him to get a bloody nose, but he simply wiped the blood away before heading out to work out. Ava also still continued to work out with Cecilia since she wasn't up to par yet. Time passed and a year went by. During this time, the days seemed to pass uneventfully. Every day Dirk stuck to his training routine. 
he was like a robot as he did the same exact things at the same exact times. His improvement was steady and constant. Ava was also able to keep to her own schedule. The first month of working out was indeed the hardest. But after that, things got much more bearable. And by the second and third month, she was already making gains in both strength and stature. Both Dirk and Cecilia were quite proud that she came as far as she did. By this time, Ava was now working out with Dirk, and she also worked out two times a day just as he did. While she still couldn't do everything he did, the two were with each other as they did similar exercises. She usually just did half or a third of what he did. Ava would arrive bright and early, go and run with Dirk in the forest, and then the two would do their exercise before going back to the house and eating. Ava would then hang out with Dirk while he tortured himself with the Manalung's technique, always watching as he collapsed and fell asleep for a few hours. Then, when he woke up, they would go back out and exercise again. Seeing his routine, Ava was baffled and couldn't understand how he did what he did. Little did she actually know about the true pain he experienced on a daily basis. She just kept fighting her own battle though. Unbeknownst to her, she had come a long way both physically and mentally. She was many times tougher in the mind now, and her confidence had grown. As for Dirk, his steady advancement had finally shown results. First, after training the Manalung's technique for so long, he had finally reached Tier I+. He was now only a step away from reaching the second tier where he would be able to finally train the first section of the Mana Heart technique. With this small advancement he had actually seen an increase in his ability to control mana. He could personally cast the Spark Chore spell faster and with more reliability, same with the Sweep spell. He could also cast the Water Ball spell a tiny bit better, but that was still a hit or miss. It was just simply too difficult to cast that spell when he could barely even detect water mana. Then there was the air chore magic, Gust. This could bring in a breeze, a simple spell for airing things out. Cecilia had taught Dirk the runes, but he had yet to be able to cast it. Air mana was just like water mana in that it was hard to detect and control. He would probably take a long time before being able to cast it. Dirk didn't practice spells too much though, saving all his energy for training the techniques. Anima was actually the one that he had made the most progress in. In fact, he had actually stepped into the rank 2 level. This was the prerequisite level that allowed him to begin destroying the skin. Since he was able to heal fast, he could expedite the process of progressing through the first rank, quickly arriving at the second. However, even with his speed, it still took an entire year. He was kind of stumped by this. How long would it take a normal person? Probably a year or two longer depending on their toughness. Either way, he was now at the point where he could officially train this technique. He wasn't quite in a rush though as he had planned to do something with Ava. Since Ava had come so far, Dirk decided to do some extra work with her. The two always worked out alone now, so he didn't need to worry about prying eyes. What Dirk was planning to do was to teach her some martial arts. Ava wanted to work on her confidence and strength. Being able to fight was a huge confidence booster. The experience of fighting someone was also a confidence booster. He wasn't doing it purely for her though. Dirk had always wanted to practice his grappling, but he never had a partner. Now though, there was someone who could solve that problem. She was the same size as him and everything. And so, when the two went out to the forest and finished their run, Dirk popped the question. Hey Ava. Huff. Yeah? Ava spoke as she gasped for breath. Some sweat was already dripping down her forehead, though the morning breeze helped cool her off. Would you like to learn some martial arts? Martial arts? Yes. Dirk took a look at Ava, who was surprised by the question. Both him and Ava were now eleven years old, and they were both about to hit puberty. Ava had already started changing, her arms and legs getting thicker and stronger and her bust popping out a bit. Apparently she was also given an anima technique, and according to Cecilia, anima enhanced the body and all of its functions. Normally, a girl working out so hard for so long would make her skinny and not develop as a normal girl would, but with anima, those detriments were bypassed. 
Cecilia said that the same thing would go for Dirk, though he didn't have to deal with the same things as a girl. This had reassured Dirk. While his book said the same thing, knowing that anima in general wouldn't bring any harm to systems of the body was nice. Either way, Ava was increasing in strength and developing quickly. They both were. Dirk now looked like a little fitness trainer. His muscles were bulging out and his body was practically perfect. His handsome face was still a bit pale, but if anything it suited his demeanor well. Dirk had only brought the option of training Ava in martial arts because she had reached a standard. She was strong and had good stamina, meaning she could handle the work. Ava thought about Dirk's proposition. She was surprised that he knew martial arts, but didn't really question where he would have learned it from. After thinking a bit, she agreed. I guess I can do that. Okay. Then we'll start now. First, I'm going to teach you something called kickboxing. Dirk spoke and walked in front of her, squaring off. He then went on to explain some basics, and after around five minutes, he was training her on fundamental movements. The two did purely martial arts training for three hours, and for Ava, it proved to be no less difficult than a normal workout, maybe harder. Thankfully though, many of Dirk's exercises that they both did every day made doing these martial movements easy. After all, many of Dirk's exercises were aimed at maintaining combat ability, so if Ava were to do these, then she would be able to move the way Dirk did. By the end, Ava was heaving for breath on the ground. Dirk was standing by her, his mind going through the training they did. Suddenly though, he thought of something. I should see if I can get some weights. That would let us push our training up a level. Would they exist? Or will I have to find alternatives? He pondered and looked around the forest. There were rocks of various sizes, but they wouldn't be optimal for strength training. He shook his head and looked at Ava. She had eventually caught her breath, but as she moved to sit up, she groaned. There were some bruises on her arms, the consequences of taking some light kicks from Dirk. Training martial arts naturally meant hitting people. Ava had done many repetitions of kicks on Dirk, but when he saw that she wouldn't get intense with her blows, he decided to show her how it was done. Ava was knocked to the ground several times before she finally got the hint and hit Dirk with all her strength. Dirk had even started yelling at her, forcing her to increase her intensity. After putting her under pressure, she would loudly grunt and shout with each of her kicks. Doing stuff like that was both shocking and embarrassing for her, but she got used to it after two hours. Dirk's beatings also helped her get over it. She would rather yell than get kicked by him. With that, they completed their first session. Ava still had a long ways to go, but so long as she stuck with it for a couple months, she would get the hand of everything. Her memory was already very good, so that would give her an edge when practicing new movements. The two headed back to eat after Ava recovered a bit. When they were walking in, Cecilia saw the bruises on Ava and asked about them. What happened? She fell. Ah. Uh -huh. Cecilia rolled her eyes at Dirk's response. She knew that he did his own toughness training, and he likely had Ava do some of the same training. Whatever it was, she didn't mind. Both of them trained anima, and getting tough was good for them. She knew better than anyone how cruel the outside world was. She also knew that Dirk wouldn't lead her down the wrong path. He had already taken himself so far already, so she trusted his ability. Well, eat up. It'll help you heal. Just avoid falling too hard. I don't think Ava's parents would enjoy their daughter going back with injuries all the time. Dirk froze for a second and pondered before nodding. Ava wasn't like him who could heal quickly and her parents would have questions if she came back with bad bruises all the time. Cecilia was fine with what he did, but they might not be. Thinking about this, he decided he would need to change up how he dished out motivation. The two ate plenty before heading upstairs. Ava would often go to Dirk's room and train her techniques. She had gotten a mana technique as well, so that's what she trained while Dirk did his own mana lung training. However, Dirk decided to take a look at his resonance technique this time. Dirk flipped open the book and went to the skin destruction section. While everything was documented by his AI, he enjoyed going through the book. 
the book was just really cool with its metal cover and seemingly ancient pages. Upon learning how to resonate anima with the skin, one only needs to concentrate the anima on the portion of skin they wish to destroy. The size of the portion is optional to the trainer, only limited by how much total anima one can control with certainty. One should only destroy the skin when they are capable of ensuring that no mistakes will ensue. However, note that the speed of advancement depends on how much skin they destroy each cycle and how often they cycle. Destroying tiny portions and recovering for long periods will not advance the trainer quickly. Destroying large portions in several different areas is optimal. Ultimately, all skin must be cycled through to reach rank 3. Dirk read through and understood what he needed to do. After practicing the resonance, he only needed to destroy the skin. However, he had options as to how he wanted to approach the destruction. He obviously wouldn't go for tiny sections. He was thinking he would do as much as he could. He would do enough to ensure a decent speed of advancement while maintaining his ability to do workouts. While it might take longer, he wanted to carry everything out slowly and steadily. He didn't want to mess up, otherwise his father might ban him from practicing the technique. He needed to show that he could handle the technique. 